Welcome. In this lecture, we will start looking at the useful form of material balance in a fluid system. What we mean by the useful form? The form is in terms of measurable or relevant variables which we can relate to and that is why we call it the useful form. The principle is just the same uh, uh, mass uh, conservation, mass can either be created or destroyed and that we have written it in a form of variables that can be measured or are relevant. So that is why we call it the useful form because we can directly measure it and we can use the principle in a way that is helpful to us. We are going to look at what is called the equation of continuity uh, by applying the material balance equation in the fluid system. So, material balance apply, applied to a fluid system gives you equation of continuity. To make things simpler, let us first consider a single component. Or it could be the total mass of a multi component system, either way that, that, that does not matter. We are looking at only one aspect of this. So, let us say that we are going to consider a single component system, which means the entire stream is just one component. It could be water, it could be whatever, and so on and so forth, um, uh, but it is a single component. To do the analysis, uh, let us consider a Cartesian coordinate system you know what a Cartesian coordinate system is a right handed Cartesian coordinate system. This is the x coordinate, this is the y coordinate, you know the right handed rule therefore, you go from x to y the direction of a right handed the direction of movement of a right handed screw when you go from x to y gives you the direction of z okay. that is how z has come out in this direction. You move from x to y the right handed screw moves in this direction and therefore, z is in this direction. Remember this, you may know this, but uh, I normally find that many people do not appreciate this in the first go. So, uh, it is good to uh, understand this very clearly. We are going to consider a certain cuboidal region in this rectangular Cartesian coordinate space. This is the cuboid here that we have drawn, x, y, z could be very different. So, the coordinates of this point here are x, y and z. The coordinates of uh, the diametrically or uh, at that other corner diametrically opposite corner if you want to call it so is x plus delta x, y plus delta y, z plus delta z which means this is delta x, this is delta y this distance and this distance is delta z and therefore, this is x plus delta z x y plus delta y and z plus delta z. So, this is our uh, this is where we are going to apply our balances or develop our balances. So, this is a fluid system which means fluid is flowing in all directions in the system we are focusing on one direction at a time that is what we have done here. The volume of the element is delta x delta y delta z as it could be uh, obvious from this ok. It is a cuboid. This is the material balance expression input rate minus output rate plus the generation rate minus the consumption rate equals the accumulation rate of that species in the system d d d of n. If a single component system or the total mass is considered, there will be no generation or consumption, right? It is just a single component throughout, and therefore, there is no Rg, there is no Rc. The balance becomes Ri minus Ro input rate and output rate alone, which cross the system boundaries alone, equals d dt of m of that single component in the system. So, this is what our balances come down to. Now, let us write this in terms of variables that we can measure or we are comfortable with. Before that the equation number here according to your textbook is 1.4.3 dash 2. This is a three dimensional flow, there is flow in all directions we need to make it general enough for our purposes therefore, we have considered three dimensions all three dimensions. So, we need to consider the contributions from each direction one by one. Before that, you know density and velocity, the units of density are kilogram per meter cubed, 
the units of velocity or meter per second. Therefore, if you multiply density and velocity, you would get units of kilogram per meter squared per second, mass per time, per area perpendicular to it and therefore, this is nothing but mass flux. Okay. This is what flux is we, as we have already seen in this course. It is the amount transferred per unit uh, per time per unit area perpendicular to the direction of transfer. Okay. So, rate is flux times area. So, the rate of mass in through the phase at x. Why are we interested in the rate of mass in? Because the various terms in the material balance expression r i r o these are rates. Okay. Therefore, we write need to write in terms of these mass rates. Rate of mass in through the phase at x. What do we mean by the phase at x? This is the x coordinate and therefore, this is the phase at that x coordinate. Okay. So, this phase is what we call the phase at x. Remember, its area is going to be delta y delta z. Okay. The phase at x is going to have an area of delta y delta z. Remember this. And therefore, the rate of mass in through the phase at x is going to be the flux times the area. The flux times the area here. The flux is nothing but density times velocity. So, density uh, rho is a uh, is rho, I am not going to say any constant or anything like that, it is general, it could vary, it could be a gas, it could vary. Therefore, rho that is a density at that uh, particular instant that we are uh, worried about at that particular space, that particular time. Rho times v x, the velocity in the x direction at x times the area of the phase at x delta y delta z is going to give us the rate of mass n through the phase at x. The rate of mass out through the phase at x plus delta x. Let me show you the phase at x plus delta x here. So, this is uh, x plus delta x and therefore, this is the phase at x plus delta x. We are going to we are looking at something entering x and leaving a, through x plus delta x and therefore, the rate of mass out through the phase at x plus delta x is nothing but rho times v x which is the flux times the area which is again delta y delta x that area does not change and therefore, this is the rate of mass out through the phase at x plus delta x. Similarly, rate of mass n through the phase at y which is the phase at y, y is um, this Okay, this is the axis here. So, at a particular point in y, we are going to have this phase and therefore, the area is going to be delta x delta z that is going to be the phase at y. So, rate of mass n through the phase at y is going to be rho v y just taking it from there at y. This is the flux of mass at y times the area of the phase at y delta x delta z. Similarly, the rate of mass out through the phase at y plus delta y. What is the phase at y plus delta y? It is this. Okay. It is the motion in this direction, the y direction is considered. So, therefore, the entry is through in, entry is in this direction, the exit is in this direction. Entry, entry is through the phase at y, the exit is through the phase at y plus delta y. And therefore, the rate of mass out through the phase at y plus delta y is rho times v y at y plus delta y times delta y delta z. You could write the other two things. What I suggest is pause the video here and uh, okay, I have shown you this. So, let me say this and then you can write the next last term or last but one term. The rate of mass n through the phase at z again uh, just to make things clear z is in this direction. So, the entry is through this phase here, the exit is through this phase here. The entry is through the phase at z, the exit is through the phase at z plus delta z. The area of both those phases are nothing but delta x delta y. Right? Is that clear? Okay. Hold on to that idea, now it must be familiar. 
rate of mass n through the phase at z is going to be rho v z at z delta x delta y and can you write the term for uh, the rate of mass out through the phase at z plus delta z. Please pause the video here and can you write it, pause please. Okay. Hopefully, you got rate of mass out this is through the phase at z plus delta z equals rho times v z z plus delta z delta x delta y. Okay. So, these are all the terms r i minus r o of this equation which is the mass balance equation. We still have this term left d d t of m. Let us write that term. That term is nothing but do d do do t of m or d d t of m is nothing but mass is nothing but density times volume density is rho volume of the control volume of the, of the system delta x delta y delta z. So, do of rho times delta x delta y delta z do t is going to give us the rate of mass accumulation within the volume element. Now, notice the delta x delta y delta z are not functions of time, they do not change with time, they are fixed uh, lengths and therefore, since they are not functions of time, they are constant with respect to time and therefore, you can take them out of the derivative. Delta x delta y delta z dou rho dou t is the term here. So, you put it all together into the material balance expression of uh, input rate minus output rate equals accumulation rate, we get d m that is this, we get delta x delta y delta z dou rho dou t, this is the accumulation term equals this is the input minus the output term in the x direction, this is the input minus the output term in the y direction plus this is the input minus the output term in the z direction. Okay. So, what I would like you to do before that let me call this equation 1.4.3 dash 3. What I would like you to do is divide throughout by delta x delta y delta z and tell me what you get. Okay. This way we interact with each other and you pick up or you understand the derivations and the basis a lot lot better. Okay. And these are very important. We are going to do a few of these things in depth and that will clearly show you that this is applicable in general to wherever uh, you would like to apply it or at least it will tell you the limitations of its application based on these assumptions we are doing this. In this case there has been no assumption so far. So, divide throughout by delta x delta y delta z and see what you get. Uh, I am going to pause here for a but I am going to ask you to pause the video here for a couple of uh, or for whatever time you want, the time is not a big deal. Take your time, uh, just pause the video till you do this exercise and see what you get. Hopefully, you got if you divide it throughout by delta x delta y delta z, you got do rho do t on this side and if you divide by delta x delta y delta z, delta y delta z will cancel out, delta x will remain in the denominator, this term will be the same. Similarly, delta y will remain in the denominator, this term will still remain the same, delta z will remain in the denominator and this term will be the same. Now, if you take the limit, impose a limit of delta x tending to 0, delta y tending to 0, delta z tending to 0, that is the essence of calculus, is not it? When we take the limit delta x tends to 0, delta y tends to 0, delta z tends to 0, what do you get? I would like you to pause the video for some time, work it out and then get back to the video. See what you get, you will be very uh, surprised or it is interesting when you work it out. See whether you got this, the rho dot is fine. In the limit of delta x tending to 0, delta y tending to 0, delta z tending to 0, this is becomes nothing but the definition of the derivative, in this case partial derivative, dou dou x of rho v x. This was, this became the definition at the limit dou dou y of rho v y. This became the definition of the derivative at the limit delta x tending, delta z tending to 0 and resulted in dou dou z of rho v z. Okay. So, we have a nice uh, compact expression here. Uh, we can make it even more compact. I am sure you have ideas. 
already. Before that, we will call this equation 1.4.3 dash 4. Vectorially speaking, you could write this as dou rho dou t is minus, can you recall this dou dou x i plus dou dou y j plus dou dou z k is nothing but your del, del operator and rho v x rho v y rho, z, rho v z is nothing but rho v and you take the dot product of this vector and this vector you will get this. So, this is a nice compact way of writing or vectorially writing the material balance expression dou rho dou t is minus del dot rho v del and rho being del and v being vectors. We will call this equation 1.4.3 dash 5. This is the equation of continuity dou rho dou t is minus del dot rho v. How did we get this? We applied material balance to a fluid system in a three dimensional Cartesian coordinate right handed Cartesian coordinate space and nothing else no other assumptions except we are looking at one component now or total mass whichever way you want to look at it total mass or one component let us say one component system for a one component system the equation of continuity is dou rho dou t is minus del dot rho v very powerful equation remember this. Let me show you or even before I show you let us reconsider this equation 1.4.3 dash 4 this equation dou rho dou t is minus dou rho dou dou x of rho v x plus dou dou y of rho v y plus dou dou z of rho v z. So, you have rho which is not a constant we have not assumed that to be a constant with space and you have v x. Okay. Both are functions of space in this case x, y, z whatever you want to call it. Therefore, this is a product of two functions and you have the derivative of that and you could expand you could use the chain rule to expand that to get individual terms. Let us do that dou rho dou t that is fine equals minus there is a minus here. This is nothing but first function into derivative of the second function plus the second function into derivative of the first function rho dou v x dou x plus v x dou rho dou x by chain rule. Similarly, by chain rule that would be rho d v y d y plus v y dou rho dou y plus again by chain rule rho dou v z d dou z plus v z dou rho dou z. If you rearrange this we take all the velocities to the other side and uh, retain the derivatives of velocities on the right hand side. Then we get dou rho dou t this is minus v x dou rho dou x therefore, plus v x dou rho dou x or add plus v x dou rho dou x on both sides they cancel out that is that is the way you actually do it, but we you know we are used to saying take it to the other side. So, we will I will say the same thing here v x dou rho dou x plus v y dou rho dou y there is a minus plus so plus v z dou rho dou z going to the other side equals whatever terms that remain here minus rho dou v x dou x plus dou v y dou y plus dou v z dou z. I will call this equation 1.4.3 dash 6. Now, you recall the definition of our substantial derivative ok derivative following the motion that is do you recognize this as a substantial derivative dou rho dou t plus v x dou rho dou x plus v y dou rho dou y plus v z dou rho dou z. Therefore, this is a substantial derivative capital D d t of rho equals minus rho del dot v ok this is nothing but del dot v dou dou x i plus dou dou y j plus dou dou z k you take the dot product with v x i plus v y j plus v z k you will get this nice compact expression when expressed vectorial. Okay. So, this is the definition in terms of the substantial derivative of the equation of continuity. Okay. We, this is just expressed in terms of the substantial derivative and we will be using these derivatives uh, in many different ways. Um, so, this is in terms of the substantial derivative the earlier one was in terms of the total derivative and so on. 
this is also the equation of continuity because we just used this um, equation here that we derived the equation of continuity dou rho dou t equals minus del dot rho v. We just expanded it using chain rule and express it a little differently in terms of the substantial derivative to get a compact form. I okay. would like to point out one thing here. Nowhere in this derivation did we assume the density to be a constant. Okay. So, just this standing out of this bracket does not mean the density is a constant. The, the density is a function of uh, both space or could be a function of both space and time. Remember this. This is a very complete equation. No assumptions so far. Okay. What I am going to do next is or even before that, if the density is a constant, in this case an incompressible liquid uh, or incompressible fluid, liquids are uh, can generally become considered as incompressible fluids, the density does not change with respect to time. The time derivatives of density can go to 0. Okay. So, if that is the case, then the equation of continuity becomes a nice beautiful del dot v equals 0. So, whatever the equation of continuity was earlier, when it is taken uh, for an incompressible fluid, it becomes del dot v equals 0, equation 1.4.3 dash 8. Remember this and remember the continuity equation, even if you do not remember it is fine, you use it a few times it will become a part of you and there is absolutely no problem. You can always refer to complex equations in this course, you, you will have it as uh, you will have it to, uh, you will have it in a way that you can refer to it while writing these equations. Um, so, do not worry about that, do not worry about remembering the complexities of math uh, while writing the equation. Okay. To understand this better, let us work out a simple problem. This is a reflection or a practice point. The problem reads, a design of a bioprocess device that is expected to handle a liquid presents the following description for V x, V y and V z. Check whether the device is feasible at all. Okay. So, this would come suppose somebody says something to you, you want to quickly check whether it is feasible, you do back of the envelope calculation using these principles, very quickly you will know whether it is even feasible uh, what the person is talking about, then you can make decisions on that and so on and so forth. That would be one of the applications of this principle in the current scenario. So, here you have V x equals k 1 into x square plus y square, V y equals k 2 into y square plus z square, V z equals k 3 into z square plus x square. And this is the velocity um, field here that is given, velocity components here that is given and you are asked to check whether the, the device is feasible. If the device is feasible, the equation of continuity must be valid because material balance has to be valid. Uh, and that is the essential principle. So, it needs to be satisfied for any process to realistically exist, it needs to be satisfied. Here we have a liquid and therefore, we can take it to be incompressible that is a good assumption. Therefore, for the given flow field we need to just check whether del dot v which is the equation of continuity at constant density equals 0 the problem becomes that simple. right? So, let us do that if you do that or pause the video here and you could do that please. You would have gotten now you need to check dou dou x v x plus dou dou y v y plus dou dou z v z equals 0. Okay. This needs to be satisfied for the device to be valid or for it to realistically exist pause the video and try it out if you have not tried it out. If you have tried it out, uh, pause please if you have not tried it out. If you tried it out, you would have gotten if you did this 2 k 1 x plus 2 k 2 y plus 2 k 3 z as the left hand side given this particular flow field. Okay, k 1 x square plus y square you take the dou v x dou x, uh, you have x here 
therefore, it, this is a constant k 1 times 2 x y is not a function of z sorry y is not a function of x and therefore, you just get 2 k 1 x here you get 2 k 2 y here you get 2 k 2 z as the derivatives and therefore, these terms would have become 2 k 1 x plus 2 k 2 y plus 2 k 2 k 3 z which can be expressed as 2 taking common 2 outside k 1 x plus k 2 y plus k 3 z and this needs to be equal to 0 for the device to exist. This as you can see is satisfied only at very specialized uh, spaces. Okay. In other words, this is the equation of a plane right k 1 x plus k 2 y plus k 3 z equals 0 is the equation of a plane. So, on that plane alone the device is valid right In no other plane the device is going to be valid and therefore, it is not a very good uh, design of a device for practical reasons. Since the validity is limited to a single plane it does not seem to be suitable for design. This equation of continuity we derived in the, re the rectangular Cartesian coordinate system. You already know that there are other uh, coordinate systems that can be more easily used when you have different geometries. For example, you have the cylindrical geometry, you have the spherical geometry. If you try to apply the Cartesian coordinate system when you have curved spaces, you get into a lot of trouble and therefore, we have different equations for different coordinate systems. With the rectangular Cartesian coordinate system we have already seen dou rho dou t equals this. For the cylindrical coordinate system the equation becomes this and the way to go from here to here is non-trivial. That way is actually given in your appendix as I will also mention later. Okay. Let me continue with this. This is, for, this is the equation for cylindrical coordinates dou rho dou t equal plus 1 by r dou dou r of rho r v r plus 1 by r dou dou theta of rho v theta plus dou dou z of rho v z equals 0. We will call this b and in spherical coordinates it happens to be this equation. What I would like you to do is make a copy of this or download this particular page and keep it separately keep uh, finding these pages separately either hard copies or soft copies it does not matter. You will need to refer to these equations in these tables often in this course to work out problems to understand various things and so on and so forth and it is good to do this it is best not to try to remember this. If you are good at remembering fine, but um, you it is best to refer to this because there is no point in missing out a term just because you do not remember this. Please make a copy of this and keep it separately. As I said in the appendix of your book, the first appendix, the ways by which you go from rectangular to cylindrical or rectangular to spherical is are actually given. With that, let us uh, end this lecture. Let us continue when we get back. See you in the next class.